The year 2020, although it wasn't exactly anyone's year, it did have one good thing, and that was that the pickup market suddenly boomed. Now in today's video, I'm going to be talking about why. Hello and welcome back to the Grand Teen. Today you can see it's a bit of a different video because I have a truck. Now, today's video topic is why the pickup market has suddenly boomed in the last year. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the pickups more often around and about town, but one of the main reasons for this is of course due to COVID. And that means a lot of people are out of jobs and been forced to go into manual labor, which I'm allergic to. This is the Mitsubishi L200 Warrior. And I do really like the sound of the name Warrior because it kind of signifies power and dominance because it does look very dominant standing next to me. And I would not want to be in front of that. Speaking of power though, let's look at the engine. This side even, not that side, because it is usually that side. Now the engine in this truck is, uh, well it's massive pretty much, and also is the bonnet, it's about the height of me. I can never find the little latch, but yep, there we go. I wouldn't recommend this truck to anyone who's under six foot, I'll be honest, but um, in there is a two and a half litre turbo diesel engine. And this is the sort of engine you would want in this vehicle because obviously you're gonna be doing a lot of towing, um, robberies, uh, anything of that sort of category. And it produces around 140 brake horsepower, which again, isn't that much. But again, you can rely on it because it is Japanese. Now, as you can imagine, this truck isn't exactly good for the environment, but that's okay because it is good for the economy. These massive tires will get you to the location you're either painting or plowing at and get the job done well. Now, the side profiling on this car is actually really nice. I really like the sort of look it has. I've said it's quite aggressive before. Um, and one other thing I like as well is the finish, the chrome and the black. It looks really nice. Now, one thing I do appreciate, especially someone as small as me, is this, which means it obviously helps you get up onto the truck. Um, and it, makes, it kind of makes you feel dominant. I like it. But yeah. Now, we'll move on to the back. Fuel filler cut here. It's a bit of a faff because it sometimes doesn't pop open. You'll just get things like that on old cars. But um, you can see this is a double cab, not a trailer like a normal pickup truck. This obviously has been added on um, and it does actually look a lot better than a normal pickup I think. So let's move on to the rear. It's very big as well, there's pretty much no other way of saying it. And one good thing about this, obviously being a big sort of vehicle like this, you think that it would have a lot of room. And you'd be correct. If we open this up, I keep doing it the wrong way, it's already broken. Um, it's got a window you can open separately to the tailgate. Ah, oh, yes. And it's strong enough to actually stand on, which is perfect for getting, you know, your furniture, your bodies, and I don't know, anything you've stolen in here. As you can see, there's lots of uh, items to, what, paint brushes. I mean, these are my dad's, so I don't know what he's doing with his life, to be honest with you, but. There we are. Um, and one thing I like doing is sitting on the tailgate, having a nice sit down. So, other than a fiddly and annoying tailgate, what else do you get for your £4,000? Um, not much really. You kind of get a basic interior. You get buttons for lights. You get another button for lights. Uh, you get heating, aircon. But you do get a stereo system. And how 1990s is that? So, more on the interior, uh, it's, like I said, basic, but you do get some cool features. Being a big car, you would think that it goes off-road, and you'd be correct. It has a five-speed manual gearbox. It also has a separate gearbox for low-range and high-range four-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. So you can see here it has 4L, four low-range, four-wheel drive low-range, or four-wheel drive high range. We have it in the two-wheel drive high range because that's all you really need on the road. You're not really gonna be going using four-wheel drive on the road, are you? Um, other things it has on here, 
a inclinometer, which doesn't work. Um, it's a bit of a shame that doesn't work actually because it's actually really cool. It's a bit, yeah, it's just very off. But you do get a glove box here, which I'm surprised about. It's a bit small for how big the vehicle is. Bit of a disappointment that. Okay, so we'll head into the rear cabin now. And this vehicle is quite good for being a family sort of vehicle as well. It has seating in the rear, as I mentioned. And it's also rather comfortable because of the leather seats in this vehicle. Now it does have quite a bit of legroom as well, which is obviously good as well for family, dogs and things that you might want to put in the back as well. Um, and it does have an armrest, which I don't know if you can see, isn't exactly good, but it's there. That's the main thing because of how excellent this truck is. Okay, um, so now I'm in the passenger seat, as you can see. Um, mainly because I can't actually drive this, of course, is my dad's truck. We're gonna bring him in now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. So I've hired you for today to drive your vehicle. I was hired. Much. I thought it was a freebie. No. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. No, it should be fun. It's a bit like carpool karaoke, but without the music. Yeah, pretty much. So, here we go. Wait for the sound of the engine. I'm getting blown with massive amounts of heat <laughs> from the actual working aircon. There we go, firing up the uh, 2.5 turbo diesel. It is. Now, what's the, uh, what's the clutch like straight away then? Uh, it's like, pretty um it feels like you're pushing your foot through the floor and out through the other side of the earth <laughs> to get a gear change in but you know once you get used to it it's, it's just um, old cars though isn't it it is yeah, old yeah so. and also i've got legs that are only about two foot long so yes he he's actually smaller than me ladies and gentlemen that's true <laughs> okay off we go so what i thought we do is um go and get some wood so that is what a very that's a very trucker thing to do um you know American, like people do that. We're not trying to fit in with the Americans, more Americans trying to fit in with us. It's the trick of it, Dad. Uh, the turning circle. Oh, turning circle is just <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a bit like, it's got the turning circle of the Titanic, if I was being brutally honest. You've actually hit a bin. Whee! <laughs> You're just turning into us, Dad. We, that's all we do is hit bins. It's actually fun though, you can see the fun out of it. It's fantastic. But then again, this is the thing to be hitting bins in, to be exactly. fair. Exactly, you won't. The thing is with this sort of vehicle, um, like I mentioned, it's big. You don't want to be in front of it. And when you do hit something, you're never ever going to notice. That's correct. I must so we, stop so we're, to getting, we're getting wood. We're and, well, I'm actually going to stop and have a pee first. That's a very trucker thing to do in a very um, interesting toilet area. Yeah. Just bear with me one second. Be back in a minute. I thought he was joking. I didn't think he actually needed a wee. Now the one good thing about this truck actually, well it's not a good thing, it's uh, the Japanese thought they'd be very clever and um, put the indicators on the right hand side of the steering wheel. That's, that's stupid. Yeah, um, it has its issues, obviously you forget you know, having driven other vehicles and getting in and driving. Uh, with the indicator on the left, when you suddenly then get back into this vehicle and drive with it on the right, you forget about that, and then actually as you come out to a junction, you very cleverly turn on the windscreen wipers. Mm. So yeah. So it is a smooth, it's quite a smooth ride, but it's quite bouncy. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, it does feel bad. They've got bumps here, so a good, a good example. Well, if you think about the height of the, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit like you're in a plasticine machine, but if you think about the height of the actual, uh, vehicle off the ground mm. um, I mean it's 
you know, it's pretty high. You can see with the side profile. Yeah. But and one thing I noticed as well is actually, um, like you said it's, it's obviously really long. Yeah. And quick. Um, it's not very quick. <laughs> but it's, it's also really like, it's not very wide either. It's quite like the similar size or width wise to, you know, like a normal modern SUV. That's right. And that's a good thing. That's another practicality um, part about this mm. vehicle is that you can probably park it, for example, in Waitrose um, yeah. quite easily. You can, although it does stick out by about 10 feet. Yeah, that's the only problem. That's it. But I can't see anything at the moment, which is why I'm now going to change the uh, Yeah, I was going to say, that's, to that's, that's another thing I've noticed is it's so misty in here. Yes, it's again one of the problems of old vehicles, uh, which you have to sort of get over really, is that they don't, well, in my view, I've had quite a few old vehicles, and they don't seem to mist clear very quickly. No. I don't know why that is. I don't know whether it's the heating system isn't that effective, or it's, it's just the, the insulation. It's probably the insulation, yeah. probably right actually. Um, but you know, the heating system works really well, yeah, the, the aircon works, it's got a, what's called an ice cold aircon system which is sort of like traditional uh, Mitsubishi one they fit in in all these kind of trucks. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good workhorse. It gets me from A to B. Um, it's, it's not what I would call exciting to drive, you know, kind of look forward to getting it and, and go off to your your work but once you're driving it and you're you know you're in it for five ten minutes you, you do quite enjoy it it's, yeah. it's just one of those kind of vehicles that you know is a workhorse vehicle really so now we're, now we're going to get wood and i'm yes. going to approach the wood collection drive through point uh, bearing in mind that actually i've got everything filling up the boot at the moment uh, so you're actually going to be able to get it in well the wood's going to have to go on the back seat which unfortunately is not yeah. ideal but uh, again it, it will sort of demonstrate uh, the sort of spatial um, the rear of back seat capability yeah. we assume that each bag of wood is a person mm. um, <laughs> you know it'll give you a good idea compost drive through I mean I've never quite worked out to me when I first heard compost drive through I thought are you actually just driving through a load of compost <laughs> didn't realise it was actually collecting the compost how well, it's like drive through McDonald's. You don't drive in the McDonald's, do you? No, but if somebody did do that, I, I would say that would be quite amusing. Maybe we should do that one day. Yeah. I'm just going to go and get the wood. Where's the wood? I don't know if you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you've got the uh, wood in the back. Yes, yes, look at that. As we said, you know, if you took that as the size of, say, an average child, uh, obviously they wouldn't be sitting on top of each other like that, but you can kind of get the idea of scale in here. I hope not. That'd be child abuse. And we're off again. With the speed. I mean, all that weight in the back, uh, and I still feel like, you know, the vehicle's in complete control. Um, you know, some cars, some trucks you get in, once you, uh, oh, the handbrake off my arm. That's the other thing about this particular truck, is the handbrake is off, but it, it isn't. still isn't off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these trucks are great. I, mean, I would recommend them if you are wanting a pickup truck. You know, you don't want to spend the money on a brand new one because, it, let's face it, who's got a spare 40k hanging around? Don't get me wrong. I would love a, um, you know, a brand new Ranger. You and pay actually, what? Four thousand for this? It's about four thousand pounds. It's two thousand and four plate. Uh, so that's, that's really good because, like, like yeah. I said before, you know, all the people out of a job, you haven't, you haven't really got much income. I, no. I, I assume. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a good cheap vehicle, but it's also got a lot about it that is good. And there's another pickup truck over there. <laughs> well, that's interesting because when I, I've never was looking at pickup trucks before. And obviously I had a little bit of a situation last year myself where I had to sort of like diversify my work and change and do other things. Um, and a pickup truck seemed a sensible solution. And I looked around and as soon as I started looking at pickup trucks, I just noticed more pickup trucks on the road mm. than ever before, oh, yeah, as, well. as, you, as you quite rightly said. Um, but I became interested in pickup trucks. You know, I couldn't stop looking at them. And don't get me wrong, you know, I, uh, I would love a, a brand new Ford Ranger. Um, the new Thunder's amazing, and, and some of the new Isuzu's. And, I mean, the Japanese pickup truck market is what well, they've obviously called it the market, or did originally, um, and still do have many of the uh, 
the pickup trucks out there. And these Warriors were, you know, a big one for Mitsubishi, but yeah. it's, I was attracted to it for the fact that, yeah, nice. as you mentioned, the price, you know, it's got quite low mileage for its age. Um, it's got a really good service history. Um, it's got everything I need, really. Um, yeah. This is where it gets interesting, a small high street road with lots of cars parked either side. Um, yeah, but as you said, you know, warrior on the front. Once you see me coming, <laughs> everyone I mean, needs to get out of the way. Out of the way. It's going to be the parting of the Red Sea. In fact, here we go. Let's just see the app. Yeah, she's holding over. Yeah. See, a yeah. little Fiesta would not be no match for the warrior. Actually, the expression on his face really did suggest there that, that was fear. I think he was more fearing about why we have loads of cameras in the car. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> Right, so that's pretty much the summary of why big uh, pickup trucks have suddenly started booming in the UK, especially. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think, uh, you know, pickup trucks necessarily are, you know, just for every sort of like big burly American kind of trucker. No. That's what we associate them with, you know, everybody's driving around at the moment from, well, me to women to... Mm -hmm. Well, obviously not kids because they don't drive, yeah. but uh, pretty much everyone. But yeah, they're popular and, and um, you know, at the end of the day, my view is it's just another 4x4 with a extra bit of uh, yeah. back end on it. Mm, more for construction, stuff like that. Construction, yeah, or towing caravans. I said or manual labour, which I'm allergic equine. to. <laughs> equine, you know, yeah. a lot of people living on farms use them. They're just, they're just a great workhorse. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to The Grand Team and follow us on Instagram at The Grand Team. <laughs> um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. Good night.